All right, you guys, it's Ross. I thought we would talk about persimmons today. This is uh, my favorite fruit for those of you guys who don't know. I know we are obsessed with uh, figs and all that, but truthfully, these are trees that I'm in love with. The fruits are just to die for. Uh, they're consistent in quality, much more consistent in quality than the figs. And for that reason, uh, you know, I, I prefer the persimmon. Um, maybe if I was in California, the best fig in California stacked up against the best persimmon. I think I'd probably prefer the fig personally, but we'll see. Uh, you know, when I in the future grow these these fruits in more optimal conditions, um, even here in Pennsylvania, you can replicate the fruit quality of something grown in California when done correctly. Uh, but uh, what I thought about doing in this video is to talk about some of the varieties that I've been really a big fan of recently. We mentioned this a little bit in the uh, update video that we did not too long ago. Maybe you guys saw that we're updating you guys on the figs, the, the pomegranates, the persimmons. We looked at uh, hoshigaki actually that we're making, dried persimmon. Um, and I mentioned a couple of the persimmons that I'm really, really liking. And some of you guys were happy to see me put out the tastings that we did of trying these different persimmons on camera and, uh, and getting an idea for them so that you guys get a better understanding of persimmons because people just don't do that. There's a nice little niche for it. It's hard to come by that, that kind of information, I think. Um, that's mainly why I'm doing it. You know, you think I'm doing it for you guys? I'm just doing it for my own self, you know, just to see what the deal was and to kind of evaluate this myself. Uh, because it's not out there. The information doesn't exist. But, you know, it's, it's hard to kind of talk about the, the fruits now because now that, you know, I don't have the fruits in front of me, I ate them all, or there wasn't many to begin with. We have about 25 more Rosianca persimmons that we're going to eat or harvest uh, probably in the next month. So that's still ongoing. But um, these two trees right here, which you can't really see that well, but this big guy here, is proc um, planted this by the way at the same time planted planted this celebrity right here both of which are american persimmons um, and i have to say that proc is just an incredible actually really both of them the american persimmon in general is an incredible piece of fruit people are really stupid i think i don't understand i, I just don't get it like you know, why don't we have this available? Why isn't this accessible? If I gave you a ripe American persimmon right off the tree or something like that, you ate it, you go nuts. Most people in America would go nuts. And we, I mean, people don't even know what a persimmon is. I think some people are kind of catching on now that there's like a foodie movement sort of happening, but this is easily the best fruit I grow here, easily, I think. Yeah, it is, it is the best fruit I grow here. And there's so many reasons for that. Nothing bothers it, disease-free, pest-free, you know, eventually they become super productive, very reliable. The fruits are the best tasting fruits I have. Um, and it's extremely hardy. You know, the American persimmon, unlike the Asian persimmons, they're like hardy down to zone fives. You know, uh, it depends, I guess, on the variety, but this thing will produce food for many, many years. It doesn't stop. And it's like, you know, when you go to Japan, at which I've been, and you just walk around different neighborhoods, almost everybody's got a persimmon tree. You got, if they have a yard, they have a persimmon tree. And it's like, well, duh, no wonder. Like, you think these people don't know what they're doing? You know? Um, <laughs> You know, it's such a popular fruit in other places. It just, it's just like blows my mind that here in the United States, we just have no idea. And a lot of it, I guess, is stemming from the commercial ability, uh, <clears throat> education about how astringent, you know, how the, the astringency, pro uh, excuse me, the astringency process works. So it just, you know, it's a shame. But that's why I'm making this video right now. So if you have somebody who wants to grow persimmons, um, you know, or should you think they should grow persimmons, send them this video. 
share the video with somebody uh, to spread the awareness because I'm telling you right now, I've tried all the fruits. You know, I grow so many different plants here, uh, so many different types of food. This is just the best one. It just is here in the, in the Philadelphia area for, I would say probably the majority of people in the United States, this is just so hard to beat for reliability and the flavor of the, uh, the fruits. Um, now what you can do with them is also amazing. So, you know, they're going to be on the trees, let's say, or I already harvested these because actually proc is a very early persimmon. Oh, ripen a lot of them before frost. Um, what you can do is take them off the tree and dry them. And you turn them into the most amazing dried fruit. Not only are they one of the best fresh fruits, but they're also one of the best dried fruits. It's really incredible. Uh, they have an incredible resistance to molding and fermentation and problems. Uh, you can just peel off the skin, put them on your counter, ha turn the fan on, and they'll dry over 20 to 30 days on the counter. It's just nuts. People string them up by their, you know, with strings and, and hang them from their roofs and stuff, but you can't do that here. It's just too wet. But anyway, that's, you know, that's the persimmon. I think it's amazing. Now, the varieties really quickly are the Americans I do prefer quite a bit because I do like the astringent persimmons way above and beyond the non-astringent types. The Fuyus and the Jiros and all that is just, it's nice, it's good, but it's, it's nothing in comparison to this. It's nothing. Um, I, I can't, I really just can't get behind, I can't, I can't understand why somebody would actually think that an, a non-astringent persimmon is better than an astringent persimmon. Uh, well, maybe I guess if you're comparing Asian types, if you're comparing a Haichia to a Fuyu, the difference isn't, I think, that big because you, what you get is something that's both quite mild. You know, when you get an American persimmon like these, Celebrity or Proc or whatever, there's so many varieties. Meator is another one I want to try. Um, they are so intensely, richly flavored, bold, uh, that just blows my mind. This, uh, this one here, Proc, which we can finally get to, took me a while to get to this point, has the most amazing dried fruit flavor that you find in um, dates, raisins, dried figs, dried persimmons. You find it in aged red wines. It's a very desirable quality and flavor of foods that people do not give enough credit to. And I'm, I'm seriously, I think I'm like addicted to that flavor. Um, it's very present um, and it's extremely good for that reason. The other one here, Celebrity, has a, um, I don't really know how to describe it, a very aromatic flavor, I guess, to it that is similar to like a blueberry. Uh, one of the blueberries I grow called Drapper has this very aromatic, uh, it's like you can taste the antioxidants in the blueberry. <laughs> it's like this uh, super, you know, just perfect, amazing flavor to it. It doesn't taste sweet. It doesn't taste, uh, you know, maybe, um, it, maybe it has a little bit of acidity to it. There's just some, some component to that that just is mind blowing. And this one here, has that in, in a very present way. Now, I think a lot of the American persimmons will have that in it, and I, I'm not 100% sure yet. I don't really pick it up in proc all that much. It's, um, I think it's too rich for that, but the celebrity does. And um, like I said, I think others will have that more in a more present manner as I trial more and more persimmons over the next few yeah, ever the next decade, really. This is going to be something that I obsess over for a long time. Uh, <clears throat> you know, so these for me are just more bold and rich, and they even have a better texture to them. So, you know, like uh, Aichia, as an example, is really juicy and uh, gooey, but it's not always so jammy. Uh, I guess if you... I guess if you... 
uh, there's just a different texture to these American persimmons that they develop really something that's thicker and jammier like a fig, like a really good confection, pastry, cake. The, the skin also really adds another component and that's chewy. You know, it's like take the chewiest skin on a fig, you get that in there in the persimmon, take the jammiest, cakiest fig, you get that in the persimmon as well. It's just insane. You know, I spend, you know, thousands of dollars and so much time trialing these figs to find something that basically is a persimmon, you know? <laughs> it's like, why, why don't I just grow persimmons? Um, now, the Miss Kim and other Asian persimmons I've had have not been that impressive. However, there is one that is very impressive that I've had uh, called uh, Seijo. And this is my younger, this is my young Seijo tree. I have another one actually by where we just were but this guy down here is finally growing a bit. I imagine maybe next year I'll get a taste of my own Sejo persimmons. It means the very best one. Um, and there's a giant tree of this somewhere, I think in Japan, I think it is, or maybe it's uh, somewhere in Korea. I don't know if this is a Japanese variety or not, but um, maybe it's in China actually, I don't know, somewhere in Asia. And uh, it is really, really good. So I don't remember, honestly, it's been many years. <clears throat> I think I need to really have them side by side to compare this with the American persimmons that I had. This is also quite a hardy one, but it's not hardy to zone five or maybe even parts of zone six. So you be, you could be pretty comfortable with it in a zone seven, but beyond that, it's just not more as suitable for most people uh, in northern climates. So, you know, this is a nice treat, a nice alternative, something different um, that I would highly recommend. Now, another one I could, I could say is very good is uh, Honan Red. And Honan Red, I believe, also is not an American either. But that one's also very good. And I've tasted a lot of that dried fruit flavor that you would pick up in a, like a Meader American persimmon or a... Um, meter if you want to call it that or the proc that we talked about so that one i think is really really good um again we have to compare these and maybe still uh, maybe my my opinions will change is the american is the proc and the celebrity better than seijo or honan red there's also smith's best and um rojo brillante people <laughs> seem to really rave about uh there's all kinds of crazy stuff that's going on and um with the with the in the world of persimmons and then of course you got the hybrids between the two which my third favorite is the rosianca and it really just comes down to the fact that well rosianca is an american persimmon with some of the you know asian that was injected into it and some of that you do taste a lot of the more asian like flavor in the persimmons themselves but it still really, to me, is predominantly um, American. So these little guys, oh, they're about the average size of an American persimmon. But these guys here are really getting soft now. And pretty soon they're all going to dry up or shrivel up on the tree. Again, I'll harvest these over the next month and I'll be super, super happy because these are just as good as it gets. I mean, it is the third, my third favorite at this point, but still like that's, that's saying something I think. Uh, now again, to me, the real difference here in the flavor is just, well, simply due to the, uh, the Asian genetics that was injected into this. So it is a bit more mild in terms of the flavor. However, I still haven't really totally determined if that's 100% true because I have had some in the past that were very rich and very intensely flavored. You know, that it is both, it is both true because it is a more milder persimmon because of that Asian genetics, but um, it is also very rich at the same time. Again, you know, it's just not as uh, bold as like something like a Barbaresco or something like that, or a Barolo, you know what I mean? Like it's more of like a Pinot Noir versus a Cabernet Sauvignon, right? 
Um, again, though, I love this tree and I love the fruits. So I'm not <clears throat> trying to put it down in any way, but that's the reality. Um, and the one component, if I, if I could have something injected into this, maybe I'd have the, you know, like that, that awesome aromatic flavor you find in Celebrity combined with the dried fruit flavors you find in Proc. That would be, I think, the best persimmon with the a drier, gooier, jammier texture. Um, that would probably be the best persimmon I could ever imagine or hope for. But anyway, so that is the video here, guys. Um, I hope that uh, you enjoyed this one. Those are my current thoughts on the persimmons, and I think the variety is obviously critical. I think you should grow them, though, no matter what variety it is. You should try the different types. See what you like. Not everyone's going to like what I like. But I promise you, um, you know, that proc or celebrity or even Rosianka, that, that's, that's an experience that everyone should enjoy um, and have access to. And it's not that difficult to grow these trees. You put them in the ground, you walk away. You know, you, pl you plant the tree right, you put down some mulch. That's it, at least here anyway. Um, we'll see you soon, all right? Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around to these persimmon videos and getting this far. Hit that subscribe button. Check out some of the other videos we've done on persimmons. Uh, I appreciate it. Take care, guys. We'll see you for the next one.